I was born on a farm at Thorndale near London, Ontario. I married uh, when I was a, a resident in uh, training and my first husband was a nephrologist. We moved to Thunder Bay. I was the hematologist, he was the nephrologist, but he was killed in an accident uh, when my son was four years old. I got married again to David, who at the time was a diplomat serving Canada in Paris. And being married to a diplomat, I wasn't entitled to a work permit. It occurred to me to do history while I was there in Paris, and I thought maybe I could do history of medicine. The history of the development of the stethoscope was the subject of her first book, and it was her PhD thesis. And it tied in with a really interesting change in medical science and I got hooked. I got completely hooked because uh, I was able to work with the personal papers of the doctor who'd invented the stethoscope, with the case records of the patients he'd used to teach him what the stethoscope meant. Given her linguistic skills and her access to the Vatican archives, she moved into another extremely complex, challenging area, uh, medical miracles. And it turned out to be the uh, final miracle in the dossier for canonization of Canada's first saint. The whole experience led me to do one of the most fascinating research projects I've worked on, which was what were all the other miracles that were used for canonization. And I published a book on 1,400 miracles worked over four centuries and proved that they were all medical. Among her major accomplishments, of course, are her textbooks, a scandalously short introduction to the history of medicine. Her books, uh, many of which I believe will turn into classics that uh, will be on the shelf like Oser for years and years and years. I applied for the job that came vacant at Queen's University, which was the Hannah Chair in the History of Medicine there, and I was really lucky when they picked me for that job. She has, uh, I think, enriched a lot of lives and made a lot of people better physicians. She was able to situate uh, things from the past, uh, both in a historical and social context, and make them uh, relevant to people that are practicing medicine today, and help us shed light on our own practice in light of what we face. In my work, for example, on the drug shortage, I run what I call an activist website about that, uh, but I am using the principles and tools of history to build that website to investigate that problem. An article on the history of tuition fees and showing how they go up politically. An article on physician income, showing how it rises considerably with the advent of Medicare. Not very many Canadians get to be the presidents of comparable organizations in the United States. And uh, that Jackie did so is uh, something of which we can be very proud. Jackie is one of the most enthusiastic, committed, and effective uh, teachers that I've ever known. She can make you feel so special. Whenever I run into Queen's grads around the country, we always reminisce about how great your lectures were. You made us question and think about a lot of the things that we took for granted in medicine. Thank you, Dr. Duffin, so much for being a supporter and champion for Humanities and Medicine. You never forget a Jackie Duffin lecture. And so for all that you've done, Dr. Duffin, thank you. We love you, Dr. Duffin! Well, I am grateful for my patients and for my students. Both have asked me questions that ended up becoming major research projects. And I'm very grateful for the inspiration of my mother, and the support of my family, my husband, David, and my two kids. Without them in my life, a whole lot of the things I've done would not ever have been imagined. Canadian Medical Hall of Fame Laureate, Dr. Jacqueline Duffin.